Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Ian at Fierce Cluster Care and if you've not been here before, this is where I do cluster upgrades and modifications. In this video, we'll be upgrading the Audi TT 8N Mark I instrument cluster for Color MFA. Now this is a complete end-to-end, -end, so it is quite long, but it ensures you get all the details. First up, removing the instrument cluster needles and the face. Of course, after you have already dismantled the instrument cluster housing. Next is removing the needle motors and these are the most difficult ones to remove from an instrument cluster but what I like to do is use these little mobile phone type tweezers they're quite tapered on the end and you're able to pry the little ends of the big motors away from their spindles and lift them out. With the smaller motors at the top for the fuel and the coolant needles, this gets a little bit tricky because they're in there quite tight and you don't want to break the arms that hold them onto their spindles because once they're broken, you'll have to replace them. So this is where these little fine tipped tweezers come in really handy. As you can see, they're able to be pushed into the arms and spread the grip away from their spindles. Then you're able to pull them out. Don't worry about your tweezers flicking away like that. As long as you get these out safely in one piece, you're all good to go. Next step is quite easy and that's removing the base of the OEM Fizz screen. And this just pushes out on the Audi TT Mark I instrument cluster. You don't have any desoldering to do here. Just remember that you've got to also take this little orange ribbon off down the bottom left hand corner there and that just pulls off from the board quite simply. There you go. So that's this simple part done. Next is removing these little LEDs that were lighting up the OEM FIS screen. The way I like to do this is I'll get my soldering iron and something like a flathead screwdriver and remove the contacts on one end of the little LEDs first, so lifting that up using the screwdriver and going along and doing that for every single one. Of course, you can use a heat gun here, but I find that that just destroys the LEDs and melts them because it gets a little bit too hot for the plastic housings. Now this process does take some time, so just make sure your soldering iron isn't too hot. I like to work at around about high 300 degrees Celsius. I find this temperature is great for helping to melt that solder and give you some working time and doesn't damage the board. Once all of the SMD LEDs have been removed, it's time to get out a blade and you'll have to cut some tracks on the board here. I've zoomed in so you can see the rear of the gray plug in the middle of the Audi TT Mark I cluster where there are these pins. So it's pins number 17, 18 and 19 that have to be disconnected from the rest of the board. So this needs to be done so that the original FIS screen is no longer being controlled and only color MFA is being controlled. You want to do this because the original FIS screen, you can be setting things like speed warnings and stuff like that, which you won't be able to see once color MFA has been installed. So just make sure those are all off before you go ahead and install color MFA. Otherwise they might be getting triggered and you don't know what that warning is. Here's a close up of the cut traces. So it's quite simple to do, but you have to be careful. In the next step, we need to prepare the rear housing where you want to be cutting a little bit of a notch where this little square is in order for the color MFA USB plug to stick out from. Now you'll see that I'm using a Dremel tool here and it's kind of fiddly because it's a recessed little area, but use something that isn't as large because uh, you can see the hole that I've made here is quite big. It doesn't need to be this large and could probably only be half that size. Next step is modifying the original frame in order for the color MFA screen to fit in. There's a lot of dremeling that you need to do here and you wanna be doing a lot of dremeling and then test fitting to ensure that you've made it enough of a recess for that screen to fit into. 
So you can see you've got to cut into that clear cylindrical section quite a lot and into the top of that housing quite a lot too. So test fitting the screen, you can see I haven't cut off enough. So I'll need to go back in there and remove more material from the cluster face. Now Color MFA is stuck on the board with a strong double-sided padded tape, which I'm just going to apply on the rear of the board here in some of the flat spots. So you want to apply these away from where those big chips are so that Color MFA isn't sticking out too much from the face of the board when you install it. So I typically like to install three pads, which helps to really secure Color MFA from falling off the board and in line to where you want it to be. To see how Color MFA is prepped with all the wiring, please click on the link in the top right hand corner of the screen. You can see that placement of the double sided tape is mainly on the green sections of the board. Once you're happy with the pads placement, Next is to sort out your wiring. So here I'm just figuring out which wires are going to go into which areas of the board. And you can follow the wiring diagrams from the colormfa.ru website in order to determine which wires belong to the green plug, which wires belong to the gray plug, and which wires belong to the blue plug. Now the Audi TT cluster is a special case where you have to solder in quite a few wires into the gray plug first because once you have stuck that board down, a few of the pins from the gray plug become inaccessible or really difficult to access. So here I'm just cutting and shutting all of the wires that I need to solder onto the gray plug before sticking down that color MFA board. Now this part does take a while, so just take your time in making sure that you're measuring correctly, you're snipping the end of the wire to cleanly remove the sheath, and then you're tinning that end. And I also like to tin the pins on the board before finally soldering them down. So you just want to repeat this process for the next few wires on that gray plug. Here's a close up of all of the connections for that gray plug. So you can see there that there are quite a few that needs to be soldered onto there before you stick that gray plug on. Once that's done, the rest of the wires can then be fed through the original Audi TT Mark I cluster housing. So then you can route them to their respective plugs on the green and the blue sides. Once all the wires have been fed through and you're happy with where they're coming out of from the rear of the housing, it's time to remove the backing of the double-sided tape in order to stick that Color MFA main motherboard down to the instrument clusters board. I'm just making sure that all the wires that are stuck to the gray plug are out of the way of those sticky pads so that they have the maximum contact patch onto the main board. I removed the backing of the double-sided tape here and just doing some final checks, making sure that none of the wires will stick onto the sticky pads and then can place the Color MFA board down onto the TT motherboard. So placement is really simple. There is a yellow component in the middle of Color MFA that you want to line up centrally to the high beam LEDs on the Audi TT motherboard. All right, everyone, if you're still with me, well done. This is where you might want to take a break as you're definitely past the halfway point. The next part involves wiring up all of the components from the rear of the housing onto several places on the motherboard. So lots of cutting, snipping, stripping wires and soldering down is involved in this next section of the installation. Now you wanna give yourself a few hours to do this there's just a lot of connections on the Audi TT Color MFA installation. And it's a lot more than what you're going to be doing if you're doing this installation on a Golf. Mm -hmm. 
So you do want to make sure you're following the wiring diagrams accurately. Definitely take your time at this stage to ensure that when you do power up the board for the first time, nothing's going to be damaged. For all your wiring diagrams and resources, I'll leave them in the links in the description. Here you can just see I've prepped all of the other wires by stripping them back first so that I can use my multimeter to figure out which pin belongs to what wire before cutting them down to size. And after a few hours work, this is what the installation of all of the wires should look something similar to. Now that all the wiring's in place, it's time to get this alignment of the Color MFA motherboard perfect. So loosen the Color MFA board from the instrument cluster board and place the white frame. Now this is a tight fit where you want the Color MFA board to be sitting right up against the bottom edge of where you did some of that dremeling work previously. Now that the board is stuck down quite firmly, this is where you want to be able to insert the screen into where you have cut a little bit of material from the board and the screen connectors should align with the Color MFA motherboard connectors. If it doesn't, like I've discovered in my case, a lot more material has to come off from that white frame in order for the board to line up with the screen contact points. So you can see here that I've cut off a lot more material from that white frame and the screen can align so that it plugs into the Color MFA motherboard. All right, so now that's done, keep pushing on because this part is where it gets fun and you can start reinstalling all of the components back again so that it starts looking like an instrument cluster and not like a hot mess of modifications. Now, very important to note for any of the instrument cluster installs is that you need to power up the board in order to have the needles installed correctly as when you power the board up, the needle motors reset themselves to zero where you can then place your needles. All right, well done. So now you have installed Color MFA, you're able to enjoy one, not only a much better looking screen, but way more functionality. Now, if you'd like to see what Color MFA is and a beginner's guide to Color MFA, click on the link in the top right hand there and you can see someone using Color MFA for the first time and how easy it is to start using all of the functions and get a grip of how to navigate Color MFA. So thanks for sticking around. I know it was a bit of a long video, but I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoy my content, please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.